Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lee and Lowe Books 2022 Editorial Showcase. I'm Cheryl Klein, Editorial Director at Lee and Lowe. And I'm Candace Costin, Associate Editor at Lee and Lowe. And we're honored that you've taken time out of your busy days to check out all the wonderful books we're publishing this year. So just to give you a quick agenda for the day, we're going to offer an introduction to Lee and Lowe Books. Then Cheryl and I will introduce the books we've already published this year the ones that are coming later this spring, and then our stellar fall 2022 list. Every category will include our picture books, novels, and books for young adult and adult readers. You can find our front list catalog with all the books we'll celebrate today at the link you're about to see on screen, which, is also, which will also be available in the chat box. And of course, check out Edelweiss or leeandlow.com for more information about our titles. We will be live tweeting this presentation at Lee and Low using the hashtag LLBooks2022. Follow along and tweet with us. You'll receive a follow-up email early next week with a link to the recording of the webinar, as well as a special discount code on our website for the books we've shared today. Lee and Low Books was established in 1991, so we just marked our 30th anniversary last year. We're proud to be family-owned and fully independent, and one of the few minority-owned publishers in the United States. And all of the books we've created over the last three decades serve our mission, to publish diverse stories all children and young adults can enjoy. Lee and Lowe takes special pride in publishing the work of debut authors and illustrators of color. We introduced the first books by talents like Caldecott winner Javaka Steptoe, author Paula Yu, and author and illustrator Don Tate, as well as the first novel co-authored by Cybert winner Tracy Sorrell. We discovered many of these talents through our two annual writing contests for debut writers of color and indigenous writers, the new Voices Award for Picture Books, now in its 22nd year, and the new Visions Award for Novels. The submission period for these contests opens on May 1st, so the 2022 edition is coming up soon. Please share the news with any eligible writers that you know. Last year, Leon Lo added another wonderful imprint to the family when we bought Cinco Puntos Press. CPP has a long list of award-winning authors like Benjamin Alere Sines, Isabel Quintero, Tim Tingle, and David Bowles. Cinco Puntos' books, and indeed all our books, are available through all major distributors and retail platforms. You can also find our ebooks on many ebook platforms. Our novels are accessible to visually impaired readers in Braille, audio, and large text formats through the Bookshare program. And of course, you can also find our books for sale at leeandlow.com, along with teacher's guides, lesson plans, author interviews, and other resources, as well as our ever lively open book blog. Finally, if you're an educator, a school administrator, or a coordinator for a nonprofit or a curriculum provider, our wonderful educational sales team would love to work with you. They pride themselves on crafting collections that will suit your unique needs. You can reach out to them at the information given on this slide. This is all good stuff, Candace, but when will we get to the really good stuff? You mean our awesome books? Right now. Excellent. We're going to start with our winter and early spring 2022 titles. These books are all available now through leanlow.com or a fine bookseller near you. And we're lucky to have a short video here featuring many of our authors introducing their titles. Hi, I'm Selena Gonzalez, author of Where Wonder Grows. I've teamed up once again with Adriana Garcia, my collaborator on the award-winning All Around Us to bring you a lyrical intergenerational story exploring our connections to nature, family, and traditions. Available also in Spanish, Donde las Maravillas Crecen. Hi, Dajiahao. Hello, everyone. I'm Ying Hua Hu, the author and illustrator of Blogs to the Big Walk, a bilingual English Mandarin counting book taking you on a stroll through Chinatown and introduce readers to the numbers 1 through 10 in Chinese. And I promise it will also leave you hungry for more. 
Hi, I'm Monica Sapita. I'm the author of Voice of the Beast. It's the story of three strangers who happen to be cousins and the journey that they take together, both literal and figurative. It's a smart, funny, fearless road trip novel. Hi, my name is Leslie Newman, and I am the author of Alicia and the Hurricane, Alicia y el Huracan. This picture book tells the timely and tender story of a Puerto Rican child facing a hurricane and her concerns over the beloved coquis of her home island. I'm Yasmin Ramirez, author of Anda de Prieta. My debut memoir is a reflection on the coming of age on the U.S.-Mexico border and a family of resilient Mexican-American women. It is also a love letter to the tough grandmother who raised me and the subsequent years searching for fulfillment after her passing. Now to tell you a little more about each of these books. First, Where Wonder Grows, the gorgeous second book by Selena Gonzalez and Adriana M. Garcia. You may remember their earlier book, All Around Us, which won both a Puda Belpre Illustrator Award honor and the American Indian Youth Literature Award. Where Wonder Grows is just as stunning. When grandma walks to her special garden, her granddaughters know to follow her there. Grandma invites the girls to explore her collection of treasures, magical rocks, crystals, seashells, and meteorites as she passes on the indigenous knowledge and wisdom of the ancestors embodied in the rocks. Where Wonder Grows reminds us of our place in the universe, as well as our connections to nature and family traditions. Back matter includes facts about the natural objects and native traditions mentioned in the story. It's also available in a Spanish edition. Kirkus called the book simply dazzling, and we think you too will be awed by where wonder grows. Our next book likewise focuses on everyday hidden treasures, but these are the wonders of an urban Chinatown in Yinghua Hu's 10 blocks to the Big Walk. As Mia and her uncle Eddie stroll to the Big Walk restaurant, they pass one giant panda ride, two majestic stone lions, three swimming turtles. Here you see five friendly neighbors doing Tai Chi Chuan in the park, and also the sweet kitten who joins Mia and Eddie on their walk. Young readers love finding the cat on every spread. And it all culminates in a magnificent feast guaranteed to leave you both hungry and satisfied. As you can see from these spreads, the book is fully bilingual in both English and Chinese, with notes in the back matter on each of the elements of Chinese culture reflected in the illustrations, and a chart featuring the numbers 1 through 10 in both languages. Tim Blocks to the Big Walk is perfect for Mandarin immersion programs, visits to Chinatown, or anyone who loves dim sum. Wow, Cheryl, that last spread always leaves me hungry. By the way, are we still on for dim sum later? Absolutely. After reading about this, I need some soup dumplings. Oh, me too. Now let's journey from Chinatown to Puerto Rico for our next book. The bilingual Alicia and the Hurricane, Alicia y el Huracan, written by legendary author Leslie Newman and illustrated by newcomer Elizabeth Arazo Baez. After snuggling into bed each night, Alicia listens for the big voices of the tiny native tree frogs, coquis, that sing her to sleep. Then one day, a terrible hurricane comes to Puerto Rico and Alicia worries about the safety of the coquis as she and her family take refuge in a shelter. When the hurricane is over and her family and neighbors unite to share resources and rebuild their neighborhood, Alicia is relieved to hear her beloved cookies sing again. This tender, timely story of resilience, love, and support when life is disrupted by a natural disaster is written with author Leslie Newman's signature gentleness, making a difficult situation accessible to young children while also offering hope. We leap from Puerto Rico to the American Southwest for Boys of the Beast by Monica Zepeda a YA novel that won our New Visions Award in 2019. The route, 1,700 miles from Portland, Oregon to Albuquerque, New Mexico. The boys, Ethan, Matt, and Oscar, three very different cousins who don't know each other at all. One is Jewish and gay, one is evangelical Christian and uptight, 
and one is a stoner and carrying a secret, literally. The Beast is Grandma Lupe's 1988 Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe, and The Trip is going to change all their lives. Publishers Weekly praised Boys of the Beast as a sure-footed debut. Booklist called it refreshing and smoothly written, and Kirkus went deep on us and said, overall, this tale soars like a missive from the soul. Our trip through the Southwest continues with Andale Prieta, the debut memoir from the wonderful Yasmin Ramirez. You caught a little glimpse of Yasmin in our author video, and we're delighted to have a book trailer here so she can tell you more about it. Hi, my name is Yasmin Ramirez, and I'm the author of Andale Prieta, and I want to tell you a little bit about my book. The literal definition of Andale Prieta means, come on, dark girl. But in the book, I explore how it's a term of endearment and how when it came from my grandmother, Ita, I learned to love my darker skin and love myself at the same time. People should read Andale Prieta because it's a universal story of family, love, loss, and coming of age. But the best part is it features an amazing place that's like no other. It's two countries, two cultures, two languages, and it's a place I call home. Kirk is called Andale Prieta, a family saga brimming with heartache and love, and a promising debut gripping in its honesty. And it was a JLG selection. It just came out yesterday, so you can find it today through all fine bookstores. Now we're excited to share some titles coming out later this spring with another video from our excellent authors to introduce them. Hi, I'm Jane Park, author of Juna and Appa. In this new adventure that takes place in their family's dry cleaning shop, Juna helps her Appa after she sees a customer yelling at him about a lost jacket. She really wants to help and goes on a magical journey in search of the jacket that reveals how different animal fathers care for their young. Hi, I'm Sergio Troncoso, author of Nobody's Pilgrims, a gritty adult literary novel with YA crossover appeal that tells the story of three teenagers on the run who carry a great menace as they are chased by greater evil. I'm Kari Krako, author of The Harvey Milk Story. This hopeful and inspiring biography tells the story of the historic gay activist Harvey Milk, who gave people the courage to be proud of who they really are. Hi, I'm Allison Goldberg, author of Bottle Tops, the inspiring biography of Ghanaian artist Ella Natsui, whose handmade sculptures created from discarded bottle tops have received international acclaim and been showcased around the world. Hi, my name is Guadalupe Garcia McCall, and I am the author of Echoes of Grace. This contemporary story explores sisterhood, family secrets, intergenerational trauma, life, and love in a modern Gothic setting with a magical realist twist. Hi, I'm Shirley Riva Vernick, author of The Sky We Shared. This novel weaves little-known historical events into a thoughtful tale of two young teenagers, one American and one Japanese, whose wartime lives on opposite sides of the world lead them to discover that hate for an enemy leaves a heavy heart. Hi, my name is Chris Barkson, and I am the author of That Summer Night on Frankie Street. It's in the magical city of New Orleans, two teens from very different backgrounds connect, and their connection is both easy and challenging at the same time. Their connection forces them to evaluate their existing relationships, the relationships they have with their friends, family, each other, and ultimately themselves. So as promised, first up we have Juna and Appa, a new book from Jane Park and Felicia Hashino, the creators of the Apollo award-winning Juna's Jar. In Juna and Appa, Juna enjoys helping her father in their dry cleaning shop. It's their special time together. After a customer yells at Papa over, Appa over a lost jacket, Juna is determined to help him find it. She ends up on a magical adventure where she sees how many different animal fathers take care of their children, and she finds her own way to support her Appa. 
Kirkus called Juna and Appa a love letter to the mom and pop shops that carry the hopes, dreams, and hard work of the families who run them. It's also a JLG selection, and it releases May 3rd, and plenty of time for Father's Day, or any day. Seeing Juna's determination and creativity reminds me of the hero of our next title. Bottle Tops is a biography about contemporary Ghanaian sculptor Ella Natsui, who uses recycled materials to create captivating works of art. This picture book was written by Alison Goldberg and illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. For years, Ella Natsui has visited recycling markets and thought about how objects pass through different hands. He has this beautiful philosophy that if you touch an object, you leave a charge on it and anybody else touching it connects with you in a way. One day while walking in Nigeria, he came across a bag of bottle tops. He wondered what was their story and history. With the help of others, L reshaped the bottle tops and joined them together with wire to create large scale tapestries, some big enough to cover buildings here we have a side-by-side -side of a spread in the book and a photo of the actual sculpture. And we hope you'll agree, illustrator Elizabeth Zunon's rendering of Ella Natsui's artwork is just gorgeous. The horn book called Bottle Tops fascinating, saying, Zunon's use of paint and cut paper collage is particularly well-suited to depicting Anatsui's life and artistry. It echoes his own evolving process of using found materials and assembling them in his artwork. Our list of inspiring true stories continues with our next biography, The Harvey Milk Story by Kari Krako, illustrated by David C. Gardner. When this book was first published in 2003, it was one of the very first picture book biographies for children about a gay leader. Nearly 20 years later, we're thrilled to bring it back with a fresh and colorful new design. The story traces Harvey's childhood in Long Island, his growth as a community leader in San Francisco, and how he became not just the first out gay man elected to public office, where he worked to enact one of the very first gay rights bills, but a pioneer in the gay rights movement as a whole, as his courage and pride helped other people live their lives out loud. Get this book for Pride Month in June and for LGBTQ history lessons year round. Candace, Candace, that's your cue. Oh. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Cheryl. I was just rereading Nobody's Pilgrims. Do you know what happens in this book? I do. When that narco sends his hitman after the teenagers who stole his truck. And the hitman delivers that massive beatdown in the parking lot. And the virus that could go viral at any moment. It is very stressful. And it's not at all our typical Lee and Low book. No, it's not. It's from Cinco Puntos Press, a powerful new adult novel by Sergei Troncoso that's like contagion meets no country for old men. The pilgrims of the title are Turi, Arnolfo, and Molly, three teenagers each trying to leave their harsh home lives behind. But the mean Villajito, who owns their truck, wants it back. The narco who hid a deadly shipment in the truck really, really wants it back. And that hitman will kill anyone who stands in his way. A literary novel with the propulsion of a thriller, a genre joyride written by a master, Nobody's Pilgrims offers a great American road trip with a gritty frontera twist. Elizabeth Crook, author of The Witch Way Tree, said of it, eloquent, bold, and terrifying. Nobody's Pilgrims is a fresh new take on the ancient themes of innocence pursued by evil and the young finding their way through a chaotic and uncertain world. We're excited to share its tension with you on May 10th. We can distress over dim sum, okay, Candace? Oh, you got it, yes. <laughs> of course, the past can be equally fraught with uncertainty, fear, and hope. As we see in the sky we shared, a young adult novel set during World War II by Shirley Riva Vernick. In southern Japan, Tamiko finds a secret way to support her country's war effort while her brother goes off to fight the Americans. In rural Oregon, Nellie waits for her father to come home from the Pacific, filling her days with savage drives and a secret crush. Nellie's and Tamiko's spheres couldn't be more different until their worlds collide in shocking, life-changing ways. Shedding light on Japan's little-known Project Fugo, the sky we shared would make a beautiful addition to any classroom studying World War II. 
Newbery Honor winning author Margie Preo said of it, Vernick brings to life the hardship, trauma, loneliness, and longing of two girls enduring the same war from worlds apart, yet with hope and the resilience of the human spirit always shining through, bright as stars against the night sky. Speaking of night skies, our next book celebrates the magic of long evenings in New Orleans. That Summer Night on Frenchman Street by debut YA novelist Chris Clarkson. The Sun is Also a Star meets Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda in this surprising and powerful novel where a new romance between Jessamine and Tennessee upends the lives of their family and friends as well as their own experiences of race, gender, and trauma. Chris Clarkson navigates these issues with humor and tenderness, creating a novel that's both a conversation starter and a delightful read about characters you'll come to love and root for. Kirkus described it as a New Orleans love story for these ages and refreshingly heartfelt. And you can find it in stores on June 14th. Here we have another YA that explores similar themes of growing up and discovering the truth. Brand new from beloved author Guadalupe Garcia McCall is her modern Gothic novel, Echoes of Grace. You all know Guadalupe for her Pura Bel Pre award-winning novel, Under the Mesquite, and her lyrical and mega-selling Summer of the Mariposas, among many other titles. In this new novel, Grace struggles to understand the echoes she inherited from her mother, visions that often distort her reality. After a family tragedy estranges her from her sister, Grace tries to find happiness again, but the echoes bring up long forgotten mysteries she feels called to investigate. Will piecing together the truth heal Grace and her sister, or will the echoes destroy everything that she holds dear? Both Kirkus and Publishers Weekly gave the book starred reviews and called it haunting and a breathtaking story. It's also a JLG selection. Finally, we have a new edition of Debbie Dahl Edwardson's acclaimed middle grade novel, Blessings Bead, complete with a new cover by Anupiak artist, Nasugrak Rainey Hobson. Blessings Bead would make a great companion to or replacement for Julie of the Wolves in any curriculum. The story traces four generations of Anupiak family in Alaska, from Newtok in 1917, who receives two blue beads from her sister, down to Blessing in 1989, who finds one of the beads and with it, a whole new connection to her family and culture. When it first came out in 2010, Blessings Bead received two starred reviews and a host of other recognitions, as you can see here. Author Debbie Dahl Edwardson married into and has lived among the Inupiaq people for more than 40 years, and she was a National Book Award finalist in 2011 for My Name Is Not Easy. We're thrilled to issue Blessings Bead in paperback for the first time and to welcome Debbie to the Lee and Low list. That wraps up our spring titles. So now we get to look ahead to our fantastic fall lineup with one more great video to in introduce all the books. Hi, my name is Lelania Garcia. When you talk about me, the words that feel good to me are she and her. I am the author of How We Can Live, which is the first book that is dedicated to the principles of the Black Lives Matter movement. And it is fully endorsed by the Black Lives Matter Global Foundation Network. I'm really excited about this book because I think that it gives everybody a chance to learn about the principles of the Black Lives Matter movement in language that is clear and accessible to everybody from very small children to all the rest of us who are older but are really trying to unlearn habits of systemic oppression. Hi, I'm Sarah Warren, author of Stacey Abrams' Lift Every Voice. How can we move our country forward? Stacey Abrams has an answer in this bright and stirring biography, perfect for discussions of voting rights and conversations about how people working together can make a difference. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Hale, author and illustrator of Copycat. In this picture book, illustrations of plants and animals and Tonka poetry are paired with photographs of innovative inventions and designs found around the world to present captivating examples of nature-inspired design. Hi, I'm Stephanie Dunn, author of the new young adult debut novel, Snitchers. 
When the adults can't, three friends team up to solve the shooting of a little boy in their own neighborhood, but find that the search for truth and justice isn't always that simple. Hi, I'm Emmeline Lee, author of Bonnie's Rocket, illustrated by Alina Chow. As Baba works as an engineer for the Apollo 11 mission, Bonnie decides to build a rocket of her own. But can she get it to fly? Inspired by the life of my grandfather and the historic moon landing, Bonnie's Rocket celebrates the diverse team that contributed to one of the U.S.'s greatest achievements. Hi, my name is Monica Brown, and I am the author of The Turquoise Room, El Cuarto Turquesa, a new bilingual picture book about generations of creative women in my family. It's in English and Spanish and gorgeously illustrated by Adriana Garcia. I hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Cindy Weil, author of Vamanos. Young readers will enjoy this fun and vibrant bilingual introduction to different modes of transportation. This is the eighth book in my First Concepts in Mexican Folk Art series. Illustrated with photographs of handmade wood carvings by master artisans from Oaxaca, Mexico. Espero que les guste. Hi, I'm Claudia Guadalupe Martinez, author of Still Dreaming, Seguimos Soñando. In this first picture book about a long forgotten part of US history, Mexican repatriation, a boy and his family must leave the only home they've ever known in order to stay together. Hi, I'm A.M. Dasu, author of Fight Back. In it, 13-year-old Alia is targeted and feels isolated because she's Muslim, but she sees she's not alone. Other young people from different backgrounds also feel discriminated against because of their identities. It's a story of hope, speaking up, and the power of coming together in the face of hatred. Let's all fight back together. So we'll kick our follow off with Stacey Abrams, Lift Every Voice, a wonderful new biography of the politician, author, and voting rights activist written by Sarah Warren. From an early age, when her parents took her with them to vote, Stacey Abrams learned that voters had power and leaders, good leaders, should serve the people and make their lives better. As an adult, Stacey pursued that idea of service into a political career, always working to expand the right to vote and to lift up every voice. As you see here, Monica Mackay's lovely illustrations for this book show not just Stacy's journey, but the beauty and uniqueness of every voter who contributes to our country's work. A timeline in the back matter offers a look at how far the United States has come, and sometimes how slowly it has moved in providing voting rights to all. Stacey Abrams' Lift Every Voice will be an essential text both this fall, as Stacey runs for governor again in Georgia, and for years to follow in discussions of community service and voting rights. Stacey Abrams is a true original, but sometimes copycats deserve attention as well. This fall, Christy Hale brings us Copycat, nature-inspired design around the world, a unique and captivating look at how nature has long been the inspiration for new products, processes, and technologies. With poetry, art, and stunning photographs, we encounter innovative inventions and solutions to real world problems. A kingfisher inspires the redesign of high speed bullet trains to make them run faster and more quietly. A hummingbird's wings drove researchers to create a new kind of electric windmill that's more efficient and safer for birds and the flexible suction cup tentacles on an octopus lead to the development of a new kind of robotic arm. These are just three of the many surprising connections between nature and human creativity that readers will discover in this book, along with additional information about biomimicry and Tonka poetry. Christie's book, Dreaming Up, A Celebration of Building, won the Boston Globe Hornbook Award and a bunch of state nominations. And this companion book is sure to be just as popular. The STEM theme continues with our next title, Bonnie's Rocket by Emmeline Lee, illustrated by Alina Chow. It's 1968 and Bonnie's father has to leave home for almost a year to work on the lunar module for the Apollo 11 mission. Before he goes, he gives Bonnie a real engineer's notebook so she can plan her own rocket. In the year that follows, Bobby, Baba and Bonnie exchange letters as Bonnie builds and tests three different versions of her rocket, demonstrating to young readers that the most important quality an engineer needs is persistence. 
When the Apollo 11 mission succeeds, as you see here, Baba comes home at last. As Emmeline noted in our opening video, this book was inspired by her grandfather's real experience working at NASA, NASA on the moon landing. And Andrea Beatty, author of Rosie Revere Engineer, said of the book, in a fresh perspective on events that change the universe, Bonnie's rocket reveals to readers that STEM is at its most powerful when it is personal. We have another beautiful family story in our next book, El Cuarto Torquesa, The Turquoise Room. Best-selling author Monica Brown takes us on a magical journey into the lives of three generations of creative women in her family. Monica's grandmother in Peru, Esther, paints a map of South America and dreams of exploring the world. Esther's daughter, Isabel, moves to the United States where she paints pictures and dreams of becoming an artist. And then Isabel's daughter, Monica, paints her own pictures with words and dreams of telling stories. As Monica passes on this legacy to her own daughters, we are all inspired to open our minds and imaginations and to follow our dreams. Illustrated by award-winning artist Adriana M. Garcia, whose work you saw earlier in Where Wonder Grows, El Cuarto Turquesa, The Turquoise Room, is a warm, lyrical story of immigration, family, and being true to oneself. Cheryl, have your mother and grandmother influenced your creative path? Oh, wow, that's a huge question, Candace. Maybe we unpack that over dim sum? Oh, deep thoughts and pork buns, I like it. <laughs> Though I might want Mexican. Which is called Vominos by Cynthia Weil. Um, the eighth book in her acclaimed Mexican folk art series. In Vominos, readers are invited to a very special place and there are many ways to get there. Each spread features a different means of traveling as well as text in both English and Spanish. Like the previous books in Cindy Wiles' series, all of the artwork in this story was handcrafted by artisans in Oaxaca, Mexico. Young readers will eagerly turn the pages to see all the different modes of transportation and the stunning artwork that accompanies them. At the end of the book, the special place everyone's going is revealed to be the library, and readers are left with gentle encouragement to share their love of reading and libraries with someone special. Keeping the people you love close to you is at the heart of our next book, Still Dreaming, Seguimos Soñando, by Claudia Guadalupe Martinez, illustrated by Magdalena Mora. Between 1930 and 1940, an estimated 2 million people living in the United States were forcibly removed to Mexico in a too little known event known as Mexican repatriation. In Still Dreaming, we see this history through a child's eyes as a young Mexican-American boy and his parents face an impossible choice, leave their beloved home in Texas or risk being separated. On the road, this family meets others like them, people with strong ties to the land, those who owned shops in LA or helped build the railroads, all told they don't belong, all forced to leave. Although the boy is scared, he is comforted by the love of his parents and the idea that they will remain together as a family. Magdalena Mora's soft toned illustrations are filled with tenderness and warmth. This is the first picture book to talk about Mexican repatriation and how it resonates with events at the US-Mexican border today. We hope you find Still Dreaming when it releases on October 11th, just in time for Hispanic Heritage Month. Moving from injustices in the past to civil rights struggles today, we have How We Can Live, The Principles of Black Lives Matter, written by Lelena Garcia and illustrated by Karen Davidson. In 2020, Lee and Lo published What We Believe, a Black Lives Matter principles activity book. This powerful workbook presented the guiding principles of the BLM movement in down-to-earth, kid-friendly language, accompanied by writing prompts and coloring pages. It received a great deal of praise from educators, and we soon heard from librarians who wanted to add the book to their collections. But they couldn't, as they don't buy activity books. Well, we could solve that problem. How We Can Live is the picture book version of the activity book, and it brings the principles to vibrant and colorful new life. 
Each spread explains one of the 13 guiding principles of Black Lives Matter alongside an image of a real person, many of them present day or historical activists for Black Lives. Questions on every spread encourage discussion of and reflection on the principles, while a new introduction explains the history of the movement and its relevance for children. Back Matter offers adults some guidelines for discussing race in general. Both of the creators of this book are active school teachers with more than 35 years experience between them, and they have been deeply involved with the Black Lives Matter at school movement. How We Can Live offers a beautiful and inspiring lens on the most important social justice movement of our time. Rounding out our fall picture book list is Marvelous Mabel, Figure Skating Superstar, written by Crystal Hubbard and illustrated by Aliana Harris. This is the inspiring true story of Mabel Fairbanks, who became the first Black athlete inducted into the U.S. Figure Skating Hall of Fame. The story shares Mabel's early life and her passion for skating. Nothing was going to stop Mabel from learning to skate, not when the only skates she could afford were too big and clunky. Nor when she was denied entrance to every skating rink in New York City. Mabel simply practiced on a homemade rink in her bedroom. When Mabel decided she needed more room to practice, she returned to one of the rinks that denied her entrance. This time she refused to take no for an answer. Mabel went on to prove how truly marvelous she was on the ice and became a trailblazer, coach, and inspiration for generations of other skaters, including Christy Yamaguchi. We're going to move now from picture books to the three truly remarkable novels on our fall list, starting with When You Get to the Other Side, written by Mariana Osorio Guma and translated from Spanish into English by Cecilia Wedell. Like Nobody's Pilgrims earlier, this is an adult novel with YA crossover appeal. It's also a refreshingly authentic immigration story, one that immigrants can actually connect with. After their grandmother passes away, 12-year-old Emilia and 15-year-old Gregorio have to leave their beautiful lush home in central Mexico. Their father is in the U.S., so they pay coyotes to smuggle them across the border. But then the smugglers kidnap Amelia for their own trafficking operation on the U.S. side. As Gregorio searches the desert for his sister, and Amelia struggles to survive, both siblings turn to the memory of their grandmother for solace, especially the lesson she taught them about connecting with plants, animals, and spirits. And soon they find those roots help them survive this brutal journey into an unknown world. Perfect for fans of Valeria Luiselli's The Lost Children Archive or Rudolf Anaya's Bless Me Ultima, When You Get to the Other Side is a beautifully written and powerful tribute to immigrants, the worlds they carry with them and the worlds they leave behind. Our next YA selection is a heart-wrenching novel that will connect with fans of true crime and contemporary stories like The Hate You Give, Snitchers by debut novelist Stephanie Dunn. Nia loves detective novels and true crime stories, stories where people get justice, not like her father whose murder went unsolved. When the little boy she babysits is caught in the crossfire of a drive-by shooting, Nia and her two best friends secretly set out to find the shooter. But the search for truth isn't straightforward, especially when the detectives are not quite kids and not quite adults, and people want peace but are afraid to talk. When justice could mean more danger, what's the right thing to do? Writer and filmmaker Stephanie Dunn has created a powerful and endearing novel about loss, truth, and the reality of violence in communities everywhere. Snitchers is a JLG selection that's perfect for fans of Renee Watson, Jacqueline Woodson, and Angie Thomas. Stephanie Dunn is definitely an author to watch. And we'll wrap up this presentation with a new book from our 2020 breakout author, A.M. Dasu called Fight Back. Two years ago, A.M. Dasu's Boy Everywhere received wide acclaim for its portrayal of a Syrian boy who immigrates to England and struggles to adjust to life there. This new book is about how to stand up for your life and what you believe, even in the face of bullying and far-right rhetoric. After a terrorist bomb goes off at a concert that Aliyah is attending with some friends, Aliyah decides that she will begin wearing the hijab for the first time in order to challenge how people in her community see Muslims. But when her school bans the hijab and she's attacked for making her choice, Aliyah feels alone. She decides to fight back for all her friends who might feel marginalized. 
And when she, they see her courage, they stand up with her. A.M. Dasu has brought us another beautiful YA novel that will touch hearts and get readers talking. And that brings our Lee and Lo books showcase to an end. Before we conclude, we'd like to highlight some of the virtual resources we're offering at leeandlo.com, including this year's summer reading list, our anti-racism book list, and books about Juneteenth. We also offer author read aloud videos, materials in Spanish to serve the needs of Spanish speaking students and families, and recordings of all of our educator webinars. You can find these resources and more at the URL here. Don't forget, if you're an educator or an administrator, our wonderful educational sales team is standing by to assist you at this very moment, and they would love to connect. Our books are also available in both print and e-form through all major distributors and retail platforms. Listed here are places you can find us on the web and on social media. We'd love to connect with you. And on our website, you'll find more information about our titles, our resources, and our offerings. So thank you so much again for joining us. Oh, Cheryl, it's almost five. I'll meet you at the dim sum place in about an hour. Does that sound good? Oh yeah. Wait, what, what's the restaurant called again? Let me check. Ah, you win some, you dim some. <laughs> yes, and we are definitely going to win. See you there. See you there. <laughs>